NBC Sports Special. From Muskegon, Michigan, on the eastern shores of Lake Michigan, it's the National Motorcycle Hill Climb Championship. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Bud Palmer, and welcome to Muskegon. We're gathered here today at the top 15 amateur and professional hill climb champions in the United States and Canada. Right now, I'm standing on part of the course. As you can see, it really is, the course is 310 feet long, and the degree of gradient is 40 degrees. It makes it really rough to ride up. This is a wildly exciting sport. As you can see, some of the contestants are catching course right now. We'll be getting underway in just a moment. Here we start the professional event right now. First up is Gordon Mitchell, who is the leading professional with 115 points coming into the National Hill Climb. He's the top qualifier for the past two years, but he's never won the professional title. He's won the amateur title, and his father has won the professional title 11 times, and his father is still competing. Gordon Mitchell, a favorite here, on his first run, he gets three runs all together. Every time, 310 feet is the one. Good run, it's a good run. Seven point nine oh. Seven point nine oh. Seven point nine oh is the nine. Now you get three rides to see. You have the top time, you can wave your turn until somebody beats it and then step in and see if you can beat that time. This is Ben Kyle, number 22, from Ghost, Indiana. He came into this with 67 points. He's in second place as far as the standings on the hill climbs held previously this year. He is the defending champion, his second here in 1962. These engines are 74 cubic inches, which is about one quarter the size of your family sedan. Then Kyle winding it up. You get it really wound up, then you throw in the clutch and let her go. You lean forward at the start. If you didn't, you get so much traction out of that rear wheel that it will tip you right over backwards. He's attaching that cord, that thong, to his right hand, which if he lets go, the handlebars will automatically stop the engine. The defending champion taking off, the time to beat so far, 7.90 by Gordon Mitchell. So far, so good. Side by Glenn Kyle. For the world champion, 8.39. You're looking down from the top at the huge crowd at the base of the hill climb with the automobiles in the background. This is Kenny Hatton, Canadian champion. 7.90, the best time so far here in the first round. By Gordon Mitchell, New York, Pennsylvania. Good start. Another good ride. Seven point nine two, the time for Kenny Hatton. Gordy Mitchell still in the lead with seven point nine zero. Getting ready now, attaching that thong to his wrist. So if he pulls his arm away or his wrist away, the bike will automatically stop. This is Joe Hemley from Cumberland, Maryland. He won the pro title in 1959 and holds the record here, 6.74 seconds up to the top of the Gordon Mitchell, up to the top, 7.90. If you notice, as they go to 310-foot course, they have two chips up the course, which makes it a lot more interesting, to say the least. The ideal ride is to get that front wheel off and ride it about off the ground all the way up to the top, which is a complete impossibility, considering how rutted this course is. Joe Hammond. He's through the barrier. And that is the fastest time today. That makes him first and changes the position here. Gordon Mitchell goes to second. 
And Kenny Hatton is third with his time of 7.92. The time to see that right now is 7.57. Mount Garfield is actually a huge sand dune on the shore of Lake Michigan. The first hill climb was tried here in 1920 when it was just sand. The idea was to see how far you could to the top. There are the markers going up the side there designating the number of feet up the hill. And you can see that little crest. Well, that's where the ditch is, the first ditch, about the 100-foot mark. And they have another one up further up the hill. We thought uh, that you'd like to take a look at a typical Class A motorcycle. And there's a top one right here. The engine was built in 1939. 74 cubic inches is the size, which is approximately one-quarter the size of a typical family sedan. This engine is set up for a bike on the flat to drive the motorcycle at over 200 miles an hour. And turn uh, wood alcohol, by the way. Now, for traction, as you can see, they have chains on the back wheel. This seems to be the preference here at Muskegon. Some of the bikes use knobby tires, but this seems to be the preference here for traction. Also, speaking of chains, as you'll notice, that the bikes are chain-driven for more positive reaction to the gears. And also, depending upon the condition of the hill, you can change the gearing very quickly by changing the size of the two drive wheels. Now, this is the tank. As you can see, it's extremely small. All you need is enough alcohol to drive you up to the top of the hill. They vary in size from a, oh, less than a quart to a little less than a gallon. Another special feature of these hill climbers is this thong. Now, you wear this thong that's required as you're driving up the hill. And if your hand becomes separated from the bar, it automatically cuts out the engine so you won't have a runaway button. It's this little button here does the same thing. So that gives you some idea of a typical Class A 74 cubic inch hill climber. This one weighs a little over 300 pounds, and the weight varies from a little over 200 to over 400. There's a good combination you're looking at. Yeah. Howard Mitchell on the left yeah. of your screen, 67 years old, one of the old competitors on his own. Talking with his son, Gordon Mitchell. There he is, 67 years old. Pretty good takeoff. Incredible to see a 67 years old competing in the National Hill Climb, going up in a very respectable 10.49. Howard Mitchell. This is number seven, Willard Bryan from Grove, Fort Ohio, 1950 Pro winner, and also won it in 49. He held a record on this hill until it was broken by Joe Hemmis in 1959. Bad start. He's still trying to get up there. The maximum attraction on these bikes to keep on going is 40 degree angle. Five seconds of time, and at the top, he disappears in the cloud of dust. For many years, racing motor cars was in. Riding motorcycles was definitely out. Today, the social gap is not. As a matter of fact, cycling has become a social, a family pastime. Events such as the National Hill Climb is an excuse for cyclists from all over the country to convene. This particular event drew more than 10,000 bucks checked into a special, well-regulated village the day before the climb. Occasionally, a refugee from a trophy room rides in. But it's a good bet he won't be king of that hill. A family that cycles together, arrives together, at least most of the time. 
But it's smart policy to count noses, especially after a big bump in the road. Junior here doesn't seem any worse for his ride. Doesn't even miss the traditional black leather jacket that is padded to serve as protection in case of a skid or if you're thrown from the machine. And the whole family is all set all together. In the afternoon, cyclists get together, chat about motorcycles, new machines, and what's going on all over the country. Then some of the more energetic conventioneers go out into their own special political arena for some improvised racing. But puttering with valves and cylinders doesn't hold everyone's attention naturally. Others begin the job of setting up house. And it's amazing just how much you can get on one motorcycle. The wife, family, tent, cooking utensils. And when chow time comes along, you have to wonder how one of the more friendly gentlemen in the village made it here on two wheels. Late in the day, the cycles of the hill climb competitors arrive. There are special machines and are van from event to event. They're checked and rechecked. Nothing is left to chance here. Tremendous pressures are placed on every inch of these machines. It's a short, rugged run up the hill, but it's steep and it's tough. Here's the top qualifier here, Gordon Mitchell, trying to screen his eyes from the sun, which is falling down behind the brow of Mount Garfield here, trying to pick his line. He's now in second place. Time, 7.90. He's been the top qualifier here for the past two years, but he's never won the national championship. much control and he wouldn't go as straight as he did on his first ride and the time shows that his first time was 7.90 the second line here second ride is 8.38 and still the leader is Joe Hemis 7.57 seconds starting up now is number nine is Kenny Hatton from Woodbridge Ontario he has a third best time in the first round and now stands in third position at a time of 7.92. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bounced around quite a bit. Oh, look at that. He just could not cut through the line. Stopped just in front of him. Very tough break for Kenny Hatton. Now, the next rider is supposed to be a Joe Hemis, but since he is the leader right now, the time is 7.57. He can actually waive his position and perhaps not take another run unless somebody beats his time. It'd be foolish for him to take his run right now. He's going to wait till somebody beats his time and then he has two wins still left. The old man of the mountain, Howard Mitchell, get ready for his second run. He's 67 years old, as I mentioned before, seems incredible, and here he is competing in a world professional championship. Not this time. 